Hi there students. In today's lecture, I wish to discuss about the Brazilian environmental law. And um, the discussion is based on the literature that I have referred from a book titled The Role of Judiciary in Environmental Governance by, it was uh, from Kluwer Law International. And in that particular book, I was going through this chapter, which was on Brazilian environmental law. It was authored by, it is authored by Igno Sarlet and Tiago Fencester uh, Seifert. That's what, if I have pronounced it correctly. So uh, the basic idea behind this lecture is to give you about an overview, a bird eye view of what Brazilian environmental law and judiciary is all about with respect to environmental protection. And what are the laws that they have in their uh, domestic regime, which deals with environmental related issues. Now, when it comes to the Brazilian environmental scenario, uh, the first and foremost grand norm, the law of the land, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Brazil 1988 is the most important document. Now, why is it so? Now, the reason behind this is uh, the, you know, if you refer to this constitution, uh, unlike our constitution, like the constitution of India, they have a very clear provision as regards environmental rights. And uh, the constitution, in fact, uh, bestows a responsibility upon the state to, uh, you know, ensure that there is a duty upon them uh, to respect, protect, and promote the citizen's dignity, be it an individual dignity or collective. So in order to do that, the constitution of the Federal Republic of Brazil, 1988, it contains several fundamental rights and fundamental duties, which also includes environmental rights. Now, any deterrence or obstacle that interferes with the fulfillment of environmental right must be accordingly dealt with and eradicated by the state. That is what it is. Now, when it comes to this legislation that they have, sorry, the constitution that they have, uh, the peculiarity of this constitution or the beauty of this constitution is that it, in fact, uh, you know, uh, clearly say that, uh, you know, the state is a guardian as well as a friend of, of fundamental rights. And upon state, there is a positive ob obligation to realize the objectives of fundamental rights. Now, with respect to this, the fundamental rights, which is in general and specifically also with respect to environmental rights, all these uh, positive obligation on the state is imposed, uh, keeping in mind that they are there with respect to promote uh, promotion and fulfillment of uh, citizens' fundamental rights. And judiciary being one of the key organs also play a significant role in fulfilling the constitutional dictate that is imposed on the state. And Brazilian judiciary, in fact, uh, is uh, pretty much responsible in safeguarding and realizing the environmental rights and entitlements. Now, the thing is that when it comes to environmental issues, uh, Brazil also faces several environmental issues. Uh, but as you have, uh, you know, uh, if you refer to the Constitution of 1988, you will also find that Article 5 of the same uh, mandates the judiciary to exercise judicial control over actions which may damage or threaten any constitutional right. So in a way, it gives the power to judiciary to scrutinize, to ensure the proper uh, promotion and uh, safeguard uh, of these environmental rights. When it comes to the issues of environmental related problems in Brazil, well, uh, as for the size of the country, well, the complexity of ecosystem is also there. And there are several uh, socio-economic aspects, which in fact, or I would rather say socio-economic realities, which also confronts several challenges from time to time. When it comes to Brazil, which is also famous for its diverse environmental, uh, you know, uh, reserves and at the same point of time problems uh, amongst them you know amazon is the one which definitely comes in your mind so the deforestation is a major problem the deforestation of amazon jungle then the famous wetlands uh, also known as the pantanal or pantanal uh, and the atlantic forest so called mata atlantica so the deforestation issues uh, 
and along with that the other ecological sites like uh, the Pantanal and Atlantic Forest Matatalika are of major concerns. Uh, now, when it comes to deforestation, it is the you know the most part of uh, is because of agricultural activity. And in Brazil, uh, the cattle farms is primarily responsible for ex, you know uh, so-called deforestation because that is in a way is leading to expansion of uh, environmental activity. Sorry, agricultural activity. Now, this in fact leads to several issues, like it's a cascading effect, so it leads to uh, several other devastation like habitat destruction, biodiversity depletion, so on and so forth, even species extinction. Now, uh, along with these challenges that Brazil already faces, another challenge with respect to environmental matters is the urban environments. Now, the majority of the people who are residing in these urban areas, they face the problem of clean drinking water, waste management, and also basic sanitation services. This is something appears quite similar because we in our country also face the same thing. Now coming to the principal environmental laws that they have, well, um, there are several legislations which came, right, it, starting from 60s. Uh, but major such uh, you know, dynamic legislations came from late 80s. Early 80s also there are quite a few. So uh, when it comes to the legislations, I insist you refer to two important legislation. One is the National Environment Protection Policy Statute of 1981 and another one is the uh, Public Civil Action Statute of 1985. So in a way, uh, you know, the, even these two legislation is important, but even prior to that, several other legislations were acted like Popular Action Statute of 1965, Forest Act of 1965, Wildlife Protection Act of 1967, Civil and Criminal Liability Act for Nuclear Activities of 1977. Uh, then you have uh, specific legislation on whales like Whale Hunting Prohibition Act of 1987, National Coastal Zone Management of 1988, National Environment Fund Act of 1988. So these are some of the legislations which were all, you know, uh, we will find with respect to environmental related issues in Brazil. Along with that, uh, you know, several other uh, uh, you know, enactment also came in the late 90s, like Toxic Substance Control Act is there of 1989, then you have National uh, Water Act of 1997, then you have Environmental Crimes Act of 1998, uh, and you also have National Environmental Education Policy Act of 1999. Then in addition to that, you have uh, National Park System Mining Regulation Act uh, and by Biosafety bio Act, so on and so forth. And if I'm not wrong, there is another legislation, which is the latest one in 2007, that is the Water and Sewage Act. So these are list of the legislations, and I insist my dear students to just refer to these legislations, at least refer to the first two, that is National Environment Protection Statute of 1981 and Public Civil Action Statute of 1985. Now, the next aspect is the constitutionalization of environmental protection in Brazil. Now, the thing is that when it comes to the Brazil Federal Constitution of 1988, uh, you will find that uh, there is a strong influence of international legal uh, you know, developments with respect to their constitution because uh, you will find, uh, you know, the at that point of time when they came up with their constitution in 1988, it was the time between Stockholm and Rio. And uh, there was an emergence of domestic environmental and ecological values at that point of time. And there was this right to an ecologically balanced envi environment was something which kind of found its prominence in the uh, constitution of Brazil. In fact, uh, it has been enshrined as a fundamental right in the Brazilian uh, you know, uh, federal constitution. For that, I insist you people to refer to chapter 6 of their constitution, there is an article called Article 225, uh, sorry, title Article 225, and if you refer to that article, it's a massive uh, uh, you know, provision and it touches upon almost everything. If I may, I'm, I'm just referring to this particular uh, you know, Article 225 of the constitution, which in fact clearly envisages that all have the right to an ecologically balanced environment, which is an asset of common use and essential to healthy quality of life. And both the government and the community shall have a duty to defend and preserve it from, for present as well as future generations. So the sustainable development element has been taken into consideration. First para of this particular article imposes a, a duty upon the state to ensure that in order to ensure the effectiveness of this particular right, it is incumbent, um, incumbent upon the government to 
preserve and restore the essential ecological diversity, uh, ecological process, uh, and also provide for ecological treatment of species and ecosystem. Uh, the government should also preserve the, you know, the diversity and integrity of genetic patrimony of the country to control the entities engaged in research and manipulation of genetic heritage. It should also define in all units of the Federation territorial spaces and their components which are to receive special protection, any alterations and suppressions being involved or allowed only by means of law and any use which may uh, you know, harm the integrity of the attributes justify their you know, protection are forbidden. The government is also required in the manner prescribed by the law for installation of works and activities which may potentially cause significant degradation of the environment. And for that, a prior environment impact study has been clearly mentioned in their constitution and it should be public. You have to refer to paragraph 4 of article 285. Paragraph 5 of 225, in fact, uh, talks about control and controlling the production, sale, use of techniques, methods, and substances which represent a risk to life and quality of life of the environment, as well as environment. Paragraph 6, on the other hand, promotes environmental education in all school levels, and it also emphasizes on public awareness of uh, the need to preserve the environment. Paragraph 7 of 225, in fact, emphasizes on protecting the flora and fauna in a manner which has been which can be prescribed by law of all the practices which in fact represent a risk to their ecological function which causes extinction of species or you know in fact uh, which also subject animals to cruelty so uh, this is something which covers a wide array of such issues however in addition to that mining and mineral resources have also been covered in fact it also talks about those who exploit mineral resources if you refer to the same clause uh, you know you'll find that those who um, exploit mineral resources they shall be required to restore the degraded em environment in accordance with technical solution demanded by competent public agency and all the procedures and activities which are considered as harmful to the environment shall subject to infractors uh, be individuals or legal entities to penal and administrative sanctions without prejudice to the obligation to repair the damage caused. In fact, uh, special emphasis has also been given to uh, you know, Brazilian Amazonian forest, Atlantic forest, uh, Sierra de Mor, and uh, the Pantanal Mato Grossens, and coastal zone of the uh, of, of Brazil, and they have been regarded as uh, national patrimony. So they shall be included, and they shall be sorry. They shall be protected, and they should be uh, conserved and preserved from time to time. Even for nuclear reactors and power plants, the constitution is very explicit. So the principles and the rules which basically guides uh, the you know the Brazilian constitution with respect to uh, you know if you refer to uh, the article that I have just mentioned, you will find that it's based on this aspect of fundamental rights and duty model of environment protection. And the whole of Brazilian society, be it an individual or community, they share this role with the state. So this enables the citizens to approach the court wherever is required for adjudication on any environmental matters. It also gives, you know, this interpretation can also be derived from a normative content uh, of this particular article 225 and the collective nature of this environmental rights has been kind of uh, you know uh, highlighted in several cases and there the supreme court the federal district court's opinion which was there uh, from the year 2005 in fact emphasizes on this uh, stressed upon so-called duty of solidarity it was a full bench judgment uh, as a direct action of unconstitutionality and this was from September 1st, 2005 where the federal court talked about the special obligation which is up to the state and collectively itself of defending and preserving it uh, in the environment uh, you know, for present as well as future generation. So, you know, the thing is that uh, most of this important statutes that is there in, our, in Brazil basically the national environment protection policy act of 1981 it establishes the regulatory framework for uh, brazil and uh, according to that there is if you go further the statute it in fact provides a very thorough and systematic approach to the subject of environmental protection and most important aspects are the liability regime in fact this uh, national environment protection 
policy statute of 1981 talks about civil liability for environmental damage uh, sorry strict liability for polluters and the public uh, you know the other legislation that i have referred the public civil action public civil action statute statute of 1985 it uh, prescribes a civil liability for environmental damage so in a way this two legislations are quite significant and you know the four dimensions of environment protection which has been clearly highlighted uh, by the constitution as well as if you, you have to read article 225 and you have to read it with article 5 clause 2 because here the role of the judiciary also chips in and there are four dimensions of environmental protection that they have perceived the natural and the physical environment as you all know which includes all the natural resources etc etc then comes the cultural environment which includes the historic uh, artistic landscape uh, you know archaeological tourist heritage etc then comes the man-made environment which includes the urban space the real estate and then comes the working environment which concerns the environment where the work is performed now the thing is that the you know when it comes to uh, the structure and the main function of the brazilian courts uh, well they are in fact you know you will find that the federal justice so called the supreme federal court is the highest court in brazil and they in a way the role of so called guardian of the constitution is assigned to this particular court and for that you have to refer to article 102 of the constitution which uh, you know envisages that the superior court of justice so called the supreme federal court is the one which has all the uh, constitutional as well as non constitutional matters it has jurisdiction which has been outlined under even under article 104 um, of the same constitution and uh, within its constitutional domain uh, the environmental related matters are also there but there is uh, when it comes to uh, you know uh, so called the environment related issues uh, well they don't have brazil they don't have any special courts or tribunal as such the environment related issues are accordingly directed to state and federal judge depending on the matter you know depending on the matter depending on the wish of the plaintiff and the defendant and the Brazilian judicial system, they do not have this specialized environmental court per se. And the only judicial forum which to an extent specialize in environmental matters are the federal courts. And some of even uh, these courts have individual judges who are pretty much specialized in the knowledge of environmental issues. Uh, the good thing about the Brazilian uh, environmental law I found is with respect to, uh, you know, animal cruelty but before that i would also like to mention that uh, in the same constitution itself if you refer to article 127 it in fact empowers various environmental authorities uh, be it your know, public you know institute for environment protection or public ministry or even brazilian institute for environment and renewable natural resources or even ministry of public defense uh, they can institute civil action also against a citizen if the citizen violates or causes any natural you know damage to national uh, natural heritage so this is uh, as per 127 now coming back to this uh, cruelty to the animals and the laws in the brazil uh, well uh, the brazilian judiciary have been very active as regards the same especially the specifically the uh, supreme federal court in fact the supreme federal court has banned this cruelty to animals by declaring this practice of farado boi I don't know if you've heard about it. Farado boi is basically, uh, you know, it's uh, called the Bullock antics. It's originated in Azores Island. A Bullock is released in the city streets and they are usually chased by the people until finally being sacrificed. So the Supreme Federal Court, they have called upon to consider the constitutionality of this particular tradition, which was pretty much there in Santa Catarina state. Now, having applied the proportionality principle and also weighing the local community's right to cultural manifestations uh, against the animal cruelty, which is in fact inherited in the tradition, the court banned the practice so as to protect the animal's physical integrity as well as welfare. So this is a good thing about this. And the court in fact held that the tradition was openly violent and cruel to animals and accordingly also contravened the constitution at the same point of time. This is something which you will also find it if you look into it. So, uh, with respect to animal cruelty, I believe uh, this is what the judiciary has played a very significant role. Along with that, when it comes to environmental uh, sanitization laws that they have, well, the Superior Court of Justice, once again, uh, they have played a very significant role, uh, especially with respect to basic sanitation services. 
Um, the thing is that they have, you know, there is a clear reflection of the interplay that is there between these uh, socioeconomic rights and environmental rights. Because when it comes to sanitation and all these amenities that I'm referring, they comes under they come under socioeconomic rights, right? Now, if you try to understand it, although it's, it might appear a bit controversial, but the judiciary of Brazil, they played a very significant role, uh, especially in attempting to pronounce on the validity or absence of, or even executive action, which aimed at giving these practical uh, you know, effect to these particular rights. So with respect to the provision of basic sanitation services, for instance, the approach of the Brazilian judiciary has been to allow the review of administrative action where the executive has failed to fulfill the obligation which has been provided uh, you know, under the law with respect to our requisite services. And uh, previously, uh, the judiciary was uh, keeping a very restrictive approach, but now things have changed and now they have you know, altering its historical historic, uh, sorry, historic restrictive approach to judicial review of environmental related administrative acts. This is what has been clearly highlighted through several judgments, several appeals which came in front of the Apex Court, like the one that is there is J appeal from 1997, 138-901, uh, so on and so forth. There are several such judgments, several such, uh, you know, uh, cases where we have find in the context of environmental sanitation though you will find the uh, superior court of justice has also shown its willingness to review administrative action so uh, you know such as like discontinuation of garbage collection or essential sanitation services which is to be provided by a public authority so court held that discontinuing such services prejudiced citizens fundamental rights enshrined in the constitution which includes right to health environment human dignity and in fact, it further held that the authorities had no discretion when it came to executing administrative action, which gave effect to the so-called, you know, cutting the administrative, sorry, which in a way, sorry, uh, what I mean is that the court, in fact, gave a very strict direction to the administrative bodies that it has no discretion when it comes to executing administrative action which gave effect to the constitutionality of the environmental rights. So from time to time, this has been also criticized. Uh, you know, quite a few uh, you know, critical evaluations suggest that uh, the judiciary's, uh, judiciary's performance in reviewing the environmental services functions of the executive, uh, in fact, has been clearly illustrated as something which, uh, you, know, you know, certain strides have been made by judiciary to hold the executive to account and there is significant scope for extending its current role. Uh, but at the same point of time, uh, the transgression into execution, executive uh, power is something which has also been questioned. However, the Brazilian co 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 you know, judiciary or the courts have has been called upon to pronounce on the matters in which the states give effect to the positive and negative components of several socio-economic and environmental rights as enshrined in the constitution. And judiciary appears to have adopted a fairly activist role in this regard. So I believe, uh, you know, from this perspective, uh, the Brazilian judiciary has done quite a good job with respect to environmental activism. But above all, I would like to hail the Constitution drafters of 1988, who has very explicitly uh, enunciated and envisaged, enumerated uh, all these dimensions of uh, environment in the Constitution, the grand norm itself, which we don't have in our country. So this is a very good thing that I have learned from the Brazilian constitution with respect to environmental rights and also the activism of Brazil, Brazilian judiciary. So I hope uh, you will refer to these legislations that I have referred here and uh, you'll find it interesting at the same point of time. In the next class, I'll discuss some other avenues of comparative environmental law. Until then, uh, take care of yourself, take care of your family, stay home, stay safe. Thank you very much.